Hello everybody, this is Reaper here with Triangle Gaming, and today we're going to be doing a League of Legends top lane guide for Wukong the Monkey King, the Kung Fu Monkey. Today we're going to be going over his abilities, masteries, runes, and an item build for him, and at the end of the video I'm going to show you some gameplay so you can see his abilities in action. Um, Wukong is a fighter slash tank, he is a heavy bruiser, can do a significant amount of damage uh, in solo fights and in team fights with his cycle and his ultimate. He has um, some utility with his dash and his stealthy cyclone uh, ability, which we'll go over here in just a minute. And he can go on as a full tank to help the team out if that's what it needs and do a significant amount of damage still. He is overall really fun to play with, pretty easy to play with once you've learned to um, you know, use his abilities to utilize them. And if, especially if the enemy champion doesn't know how to play against Wukong, you can have a lot of fun with them. So let's go ahead and start. So in his abilities, let's start with his uh, passive, Stone Skin increases Wukong's armor and magic resistance for each nearby enemy champion. This is a tanky passive, but I believe it increases it by 4 for each nearby enemy champion. Your Q, your crushing blow, Wukong's next attack deals additional physical damage, gains range, and reduces the enemy's armor for a short duration. It increases the range by about like 45, just a slight increase for your next uh, attack. Um, your decoy, your W, Wukong becomes invisible for one and a half seconds. An uncontrollable decoy is left behind that will deal magic damage to enemies near it after one and a half seconds. This is um, for your pokes, where you're just trying to get into a little bit of damage and get out really quick. You can hit your decoy, and most of the time the enemy champion will be stuck on your decoy and they won't even worry about you getting away. Um, so it's really useful, it's uh, one of his utilities. Nimbus Strike, your E, Wukong dashes toward a target enemy and sends out images to attack up to two additional near enemies near his target dealing physical damage to each enemy struck this is your dash this is your initiating move this is what you're going to be uh, maxing out first your crushing blow will be second and your decoy last now in your pokes this is going to do a significant amount of damage it hits two other enemies near the champion or whichever your target is and of course you can hit your E hit your Q and then of course if you're get, needing to get out really quick hit your W for your decoy if you're going all in you'll use your Nimbus strike to get in there initiate the attack use your Q your crushing blow and then start with your cyclone the ultimate Wukong's staff grows outward and he spins it around dealing damage and knocking up enemies Wukong gains movement speed over the duration of the spell so when you activate this it's going to be a big a AOE just like Garen's um, judgment move and this is going to knock up any enemy champions that it hits. It's going to knock them up. It'll last for about half a second to a second, somewhere in there. It does a little bit of CC. And then it continues for about four or five seconds. The actual move does. And it does a significant amount of damage, so it helps you out a lot in team fights, too. It also helps you out, of course, in your solo fights. Um, but use this when you're going to be going all in and you're going to be really wanting to use it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump over into his masteries. All right, so in Wukong's masteries, you can set them up two different ways, your offensive heavy bruiser or your tanky mastery build. I'm going to show you both ways. Um, on the offensive side, you've got 21 in offense and 9 in defense, of course. In your offensive um, build, you've got the double-edged sword, sorcery for his cooldown rate, brute force, martial mastery, spell weaving, blade weaving, two in warlord, your devastating strikes, your havoc, and over here we've got dangerous game, and executioner. On your defensive side you've got the block, recovery, unyielding, veteran scars, and juggernaut. Now let's go ahead and switch over and I'll show you the tanky one. Alright and for the tank build on the masteries all you're gonna do is a swap. 9 in offense, 21 in defense. On the offensive side we've got some 3 in sorcery, 1 in butcher, 3 in brute force, 1 in double edged sword, and 1 in martial mastery. On the defensive end, we've got two in block, two in enchanted armor, veteran scars, unyielding, juggernaut, hardiness, resistance, swiftness, legendary guardian, and tenacious. Of course, this is going to be what you decide before the game starts. Are you going to go bruiser or are you going to go tank? You're going to look at what your team needs, and if it's kind of offset where you have a tank or someone that can build bruiser too you might go ahead and go with the offensive end um, most of the time you will go on the offensive end with Wukong unless your team needs a tank 
but at again as a tank he can still do significant amount of damage so just have fun with him play around with him see how you like to um, play with Wukong as a champion and go from there and you can tweak these of course let's go ahead and jump over to his runes now with his runes there's nothing special about this this is generally what you would go with with majority of your um, heavy bruisers slash tanks in the top lane we're going to have uh, the greater quintessence of attack damage plus 2.25 attack damage in the um, marks we're going to have the greater mark of attack damage in the um, sorry the seals we're going to have the greater seal of armor and then in the glyphs we're going to have the greater glyph of magic magic resist and you can see the stats over here now the runes of course they're meant for helping you out in the initial laning phase of the game but this is a general uh, rune build that you would do for most of your heavy bruisers off and offset tanks uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into that item build okay so in his item build some of these items are going to be situational whether you're going to be going heavy bruiser or if you're going to need to get some some tanky items and stuff like that for his starting items I generally go with the warding totem health pots and 95% of the time I go with the Doran Shield for the additional health and the health regen for some more sustainability in the early game in the laning phase. Um, you can go ahead and go with the Long Sword, give you additional attack damage and get an early head start on the uh, Brutalizer. And also you won't have to worry about selling the Doran Shield later on. Or the Doran's Blade, of course, that's you know never a bad choice in the early phase of the game. The Core, the first recall, you're going to be looking at you know, do you want to go with some damage or you want to get in some armor or magic resist? Now, the uh, Brutalizer will build into your Black Cleaver later on to deal damage, more damage to uh, high armored uh, opponents, which a lot of your enemy opponents in the top lane will be building armor against you. Uh, and of course, it gives you your cooldown reduction. The Ninja Tabby, the boots, will give you additional armor along with blocking 10% of the uh, basic attack damage. The Mercury Treads, if you see that they have a lot of CC on their team or you're going against a, an opponent in the top lane that's going to be building AP, this is going to help you out with some magic resist. Your Pickaxe will help you build into your Ravenous Hydra or your Last Whisper. And of course your Giant's Belt to build into a lot of different um, <laughs> armor items later on. And your Kindle Gem which will help you build into your uh, uh, magic resist items later on. Your Offensive Items. Uh, Last Whisper for the um, armor penetration. Black Cleaver also for um, armor penetration, also giving you health with the cooldown reduction. Ravenous Hydra to give you some life steal, some increased health regeneration, and a significant amount of attack damage along with AoE. Your Yomu's Ghost Blade for attack damage, critical strike chance, and cooldown reduction along with some more armor penetration. And then your Maul of Malmortis for some magic resist and attack damage and also increases the damage it does with, you know, the less health that you have or more health you're missing. And upon taking da magic damage that would reduce health below 30% grants a shield that absorbs 400 magic damage. So it helps you out with the magic game. And the armor, uh, if you're having to build full tank or you're going to have to get a few tanky items, um, your Randuin's Omen is going to give you a significant amount of health with some armor. It also decreases the um, attacker's basic attack speed by 10%. And of course you can activate it to slow him down. Your Iceborne Gauntlet for some mana, armor, and a little bit of ability power and cooldown reduction. But uh, the biggest thing about this is it's uh, passive. After using an ability, it gives you an increased... Your next basic attack will have increased attack damage and it'll slow... Um, enemies down in a certain in a, a radius, a certain amount of radius. Sorry, uh, your sunfire cape to deal damage to enemies close to you, along with giving you health and armor. Your frozen heart. Only one person on the team generally gets this. Uh, normally, it's the tank or the um, support, of course, but it gives you increased armor, mana, cool red, cooldown reduction, and it reduces the attack speed of all nearby enemies. Thorn mail. If you're going full tank, Thorn Mail is a good item, especially if they have the ADC got fed really hard. This is going to give 30% of the attack damage coming in from basic attacks right back to the attacker, along with giving you a, a 100 armor. And then your magic resist items, your spirit visage for magic resist, uh, health regen, 
and cool down reduction it also increases your self-healing and health regen and lifesteal and stuff of that nature your locket of the iron solari it's going to give you 400 health 20 magic resistance and cooldown reduction if you activate it, it grants a shield to nearby in, uh, allies, and its aura grants nearby allies plus 20 magic resist. So if you're dealing with a lot of uh, AP enemy champions, this is going to help your whole team out. Your Banshee's Veil for uh, magic resist and health it also grants a shield that blocks any incoming ability. The only thing with this is it has a 40 second cooldown after it's used. So if anybody knows you have this, they'll use an easy spell on you to knock that shield down, and then they're going to hit you with their big spells. Um, it also grants you some um, health regen after you've taken um, damage from an enemy champion. And then your Dervish Blade for some attack speed, magic resist, and cooldown. Also, it's active, removes all, be all debuffs um, of CCs and stuff of that nature. Now, of course, these items are all um, situational. Most of the time, you're going to be going with your offensive items, unless, of course, you're having to go tanky. Um, Randuin's Omen would probably be your best armor item and then the spirit's visage is going to be your best magic resist item to go with okay let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay footage and i'll see y'all at the end of the video Alright guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for Wukong the Monkey King. On his abilities, just remember E, max out E first, Q second, W last. And of course, max out his ultimate as soon as you can. But if you have any questions or comments on um, anything that I showed in the video, go ahead and leave it down below. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more videos coming out in the near future and we've got plenty to watch right now, so... I hope you all enjoyed the video. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one.